Oh, we would, we would truly love that. And, um, and so we're going to start tonight, uh, with the word of God. Um, we know that the word of God is mighty and we know that the word of God is eternal and is powerful. And as we, uh, speak it out of our mouths, it becomes even more powerful. And so that's what Brother Fred is going to teach on tonight is making bold proclamations. And so we're, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him teach. The Lord said in Isaiah 55 verses 10 through 11 that as the rain and the snow come down and water the earth and the plants grow, uh, so is my work. When I speak speak it out, send it out, it will not return to me empty or void, but it will accomplish uh, what I send it out to do. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting about this is that the rain and the uh, snow that come down from heaven, they don't go back up. But in this case, uh, God's word returns to him. Now, how does it return to him? It returns as we speak it out. So he uh, speaks the word to us, and then we speak it out. And when when we speak it out, it's still powerful. It's it's a powerful word. And so I want to start with a question, and uh, I'm going to talk about five different people, and uh, just briefly, and ask you which one uh, who were their words the most powerful. And number one is Moses. Moses created all those signs and wonders in Egypt. He split the Red Sea, had signs and wonders in the desert. First one was Moses. The second one is Elijah. Mm -hmm. he, he controlled the rain for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. He called down fire, which uh, burned the sacrifice and burnt, burned the altar. And he called down fire and burned the armies. And the third person is Ezekiel. Ezekiel... Uh, uh, spoke to dry bones in the desert and they came together and raised up as a mighty army. So we see all three of those, their words were very powerful. Now let's think about Jesus, his words. Mm -hmm. uh, he raised the dead. He healed the sick with his words. Uh, he sent his word and healed them. And uh, he calmed the sea. His words were powerful. Uh, and the fifth one is you. Hallelujah! And, and your words it can also be powerful. So of those five, which are the most powerful? And I want to say that all five are equal. You, mm. your words are powerful. They're equal with Moses and forms of, of power. With Moses, Elijah, Ezekiel, Jesus, and you. You all have, all five, their words are powerful, and I'll tell you how they are powerful. It's when you hear the Spirit of God speak to you, and you proclaim those words. So God's word comes down from heaven. It comes through the Spirit of God, and it's he hears, he speaks to you, and you speak back to him. And when his words come back to him, they are powerful. And so your words are as powerful as Moses, Elijah, Ezekiel, and Jesus. Now you might say, well, Jesus was the son of God. He was always God. That's true. Amen. But when he was on the earth, he laid his divinity down and he operated as a man filled and immersed in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the reason he did that was to model what a believer can do today. That's by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit. When you hear what the Spirit says, you speak that out, then those words are very powerful. Now, Jesus said in John 20, verse 21, as the Father sends sent me so i'm sending you okay so he is sending you with the same resources he came on the earth with and then he also said in uh, john 14 12 if you believe in me you, 
he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works. But let's just focus on the works that he did. Mm -hmm. He said, we can do what he did, okay, because we believe, and we have the same resources. If we uh, had less resources than Jesus did, then that wouldn't be fair, because he said, He's giving us the same resources so we can do the same thing he did. And so when we hear his word and we speak it out, your words are powerful. That is yeah, the amen. that is the bottom line for this uh, message tonight. Your words are with power. And so I'm talking about a proclamation. So let's think about what a proclamation is. And I did a word search through uh, Vine's Expository Dictionary. And so the, it had uh, several different examples about proclamation. And this is a real good example. Uh, and I'm going to quote the verses out of the New American Standard Bible. Uh, but these all related to the word proclamation. But if you read them out of some other translation, it might not be uh, it might not say exactly proclamation, but in the Greek, it's proclamation, because that's what the Vines Expository Dictionary says. Okay, so this is what a proclamation is. Matthew 10, verse 27. What I tell you in the darkness, you speak in the light, and what you hear whispered, what you hear whispered in your ear that proclaim from the housetop. So that's what a proclamation is. You hear it whispered in your ear by the Holy Spirit and you proclaim it, it says, from the housetop. And so it's a very simple example, a simple way of understanding what a proclamation is. It's something that the Spirit of God has spoken to you and you begin to speak it out. And, and you may not just speak it out one time, you may speak it out over and over again. Now, what I'm talking about tonight is something uh, Sherry and I learned uh, 27 years ago. And at that time, uh, three doctors told her that she had terminal cancer and she would not live six months. She would not live six months. And that was 27 years ago. And she is healed from cancer and continues to live and be clean and clear from cancer Amen. because the Lord healed her. But there were some proclamations that we made because we heard from the Spirit. Spirit. He whispered in our ear. We spoke it out. It became a proclamation. Now, the thing about a proclamation, it's very powerful. It's as powerful as if God said it himself when a believer who is believing that he has heard from the Holy Spirit, what to say, and he says those words. Now, I'm, I'm still going back over that example, what happened 27 years ago, yeah. and uh, I was praying about Sherry's uh, situation, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me, and he said, we have the victory over this. Now, at the time, I didn't know what this was. I knew she was having some issues. She was going to the doctor, and there was some examination. And I knew we had the victory. So this is what the Spirit said to me. We have the victory over this. Now, when he said we, I knew he was talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And Sherry and me. And so that's that was the we I took. We, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Sherry and I have the victory over this. I didn't know what this was at that time. And it didn't matter, but I knew we had the victory over it. Okay, in a few days. Uh, the doctors called Sherry and said, three doctors have examined your case, and they're all three in agreement that you have terminal cancer and you will not live six months. Okay, so Sherry got in her car. I was out praying. I'd been walking and praying, as I often do, and she came and picked me up, and she explained to me when I got in the car, uh, she said, the three doctors have agreed that I have terminal cancer and I will not live six months. And these were the first words that came out of my mouth. We have, have the, the victory. victory over this because that's what I had already heard from the Spirit of God. 
now, in just a few days, uh, about a week, I was going to teach about healing. And I was going to teach in the congregation we were attending. I was going to teach for six weeks. Now, can you imagine what kind of situation I, I found myself in? I was going to teach on healing, on divine healing for six weeks. And yet I had just gotten a report from the doctor that my wife was going to die in six months. And yet I'm going to begin teaching on healing. <laughs> And so that, that's a pretty serious situation to be in. I could have uh, taught, called the uh, pastor and said, no, I'm not going to teach about healing because my wife uh, is not going to live for six months. That could have been my uh, opinion response, and yeah. response to it. But no, I went ahead and te to teach. Uh, and I was going to teach the six weeks. And because I'd been in prayer a lot, Sherry, and I'd been in prayer a lot about that. And... Uh, uh, what I heard a few days before I began to teach the first week, I heard the Lord say, uh, for me to say this at the beginning of the meeting, I explained to the people that my wife, that the doctor said my wife would not live for six months, but this is what the, I heard from the Holy Spirit, that before the six-week period of my teaching is over with, she will stand and proclaim that she has been totally healed by the Lord, okay? So that was a Wednesday night. I believe it was January the 8th uh, of 1993. And on that Wednesday, I said that. And when, when I said that, uh, what happened to you, Sherry? Well, I was sitting on the first pew and I was listening to Brother Fred and all of a sudden I felt like it was hot oil uh, it started to pour on top of my head and it went down over my body and all the way down to my feet. And then all of a sudden I found myself, I was lifted off of the pew. I was literally not sitting on the pew anymore. And I was just dangling there. And I knew by, by, by the spirit of the Lord then and the presence of God that, that he had taken uh, the cancer out of my body. He had, he had destroyed it. And, uh, and so that was, that was just a, it was like it was yesterday that, that I remember. Okay. That was a Wednesday night on that Friday, uh, Sherry had already scheduled and the doctors had already scheduled exploratory surgery to see uh, about the cancer, which they had seen from the test. And so they did the exploration surgery on that Friday and the doctor came yeah, in and talked to her and, and kept me from one side to the other. He said, uh, three doctors agreed before we went in there that you had cancer. But when we got in there, there was no cancer. Hallelujah. Somebody got in there first. Amen. And Sherry said it was the Lord that yes. got in there first. Yes. And removed it. Okay. On the next Wednesday, on the next Wednesday, Sherry stood up and said that the Lord had healed her from cancer. And Amen. that uh, she was completely clean from cancer. It was because the Lord had done it. Okay. But we had been making proclamations yeah. up until that point in time, things that we had heard by the spirit of God. And uh, one of the things that she was proclaiming was Psalm 118 verse 17 that says, I shall I not die, die, but live and live. declare the works of the Lord. See, that's something that the Holy Spirit spoke to her by the Spirit. It was, a, and she heard the verse, uh, heard uh, that it, that verse, and, and quoted it. But then she didn't know where it was in the Bible, so she had to look it up. But it was Psalm 118, verse 17, and so that was a proclamation. She began to speak that out. She spoke that out over and over and over again. Over again. And then, see, I uh, I spoke out. We have the victory over this. This Amen. is another Amen. proclamation. Amen. That's a, another proclamation. And the third proclamation was my wife, although the doctors have said she will uh, has uh, terminal cancer and will not live six months, I proclaimed to the whole, the whole congregation that was there that uh, night that uh, before six weeks was up, she would stand and proclaim that God had healed her from cancer. So all of those were proclamations, and we kept speaking them out, mm -hmm. what we had heard. 
just like Matthew 10, 27 says, what you've heard in your, whispered in your ear, proclaim, proclaim from the housetop. And we, had proclaimed, we were proclaiming, we were just saying, you know, she's going to live, she's going to live. And, and sure enough, the Lord healed her on that Wednesday, and I believe it was January the 8th, 1993, and the <laughs> second Wednesday, she stood and said she had been healed. Okay, so it's yeah. this concept I want to talk about. We see it there clearly in Matthew 10, 27, but I want to go on to some other verses also. See, in uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, I have been anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. He said that he was anointed to do several things. And then in verse 19, he said to proclaim a new season. Mm. And the new season he proclaimed. And see, we're looking at the word proclaim here. He proclaimed the acceptable year, year of, the, of Lord, the Lord, the favorable year of the Lord. So he, he was proclaiming a new season. So you can proclaim a new season in your life, in your situation, in your family, Amen. in your children. You Amen. can proclaim. When you hear the Spirit of God speak something in your ear, you can stand and proclaim it. Now, here is the difference between a confession. A confession, you can read the Bible, you can find a verse, and you can confess it out of your mouth. You can memorize it, and you can confess it out of your mouth, mm -hmm. and that is a confession. But an, a, pro a proclamation is more aggressive. Hallelujah. It is hearing the Spirit of God and speaking what the Spirit of God has said to you. And so you're returning those same words back to God that God has spoken through his Spirit to you. And it will carry power, Amen. enough power to bring itself to pass. Woo! That is a proclamation. Amen. Because God said, my word that comes out of my mouth I'll, will not I'll return to me empty. The rain and the snow come down and they don't return to heaven. They come down out of heaven, but they don't return to heaven. But when God speaks his word through his spirit to a believer, and that believer begins to proclaim it, getting up on the housetop if need be, uh, say it to the congregation if need be, say it out mm -hmm. in the street, say it to the people, proclaim it, it's going to go back up to God and it's going to carry enough power to carry itself about. So oh, that's yeah. the second uh, proclamation. Woo! Jesus proclaimed a new season, a favorable year of the Lord and it's because he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Now let's think about Acts chapter 8, verse 5, and it says, Philip, mm -hmm. we're talking about Philip the evangelist, oh, love him, went love down him. to Samaria, and what did he do? He proclaimed, proclaimed Christ, Christ, and there were all kinds of miracles, and the city was filled with joy, because why? He proclaimed Christ. Woo, glory. Now, let me tell you, you're all educated, and you, you're uh, intelligent and you've gone to school and and people have reasoned with you and you've uh, you've begun to learn things and you learn things and that was by reasoning and going back and forth and you you found out what was what was the true in your profession and what you're what you're learning and so that's by reasoning but see the gospel you don't have to reason with people you don't have to explain it so they can come to all of the different ins and outs look at all the ins and outs of the gospel what you do with the gospel is to proclaim it and, and preach it but that word uh, some preach can also be uh, at times interpreted as proclaim and that's what Philip did, he proclaimed Christ. Christ. And, and uh, mm -hmm. Matthew uh, 24, 14 says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached, but some translations say will be proclaimed Proclaimed throughout the, the world, world, and then the end of the age shall, shall come. come. So Hallelujah. it's not about reasoning with people, and it's not trying to debate people, and, and it's not trying to uh, uh, just explain things to the minutest detail so everybody understands everything. It's about proclaiming, proclaiming the gospel because it will have enough 
power to bring itself to pass. Woo, glory. So this is not about Woo. just reason, intellectual reason. See, we're, mm. you're all intelligent people. I, 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 I see that, that you are intelligent people, but the gospel is not explained in minute detail. It's proclaimed, and, Christ, and Philip proclaimed Christ, and the city had experienced a great revival, and, and the, there was great joy in the city, and they, had, they saw so many miracles, and the demons were cast out, and the people were born again. All of these things happened not because he went over all of the points A, B, C, and, and got everybody to reason and, and, and convinced everybody in their reasoning because in the reasoning is in the natural realm, in the, in the mind and in the intellectual realm. And there is some power, the intellectual power, but intellectual power does not compare with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, and the power of the Holy Spirit is upon the gospel. And when you proclaim the gospel, then lives are going to be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, you, glory. You, you stand there and argue with them and debate. Hallelujah. With them. There's not any power to that, and the lives are not going to be changed. The lives are changed when you proclaim Christ. Amen. Like Philip proclaimed Christ, the whole city. Hallelujah. Uh, experienced a revival. Amen. And even Amen. the most evil people in the city. They accepted Jesus Christ because they had seen Christ proclaimed. They had seen the kingdom of God demonstrated with signs and wonders and miracles. Yes, I mean, so it's I mean. a, not about intellectual power, intellectual knowledge. I'd it's like to say about the power of the Holy Spirit. Sherry. I'd like to say something here. And that is, um, and I know George, um, George knows this and Joy knows this, um, but I just want to, to share with you that, um, you know, I, Brother Fred, Dr. White, uh, he has um, his PhD. Uh, I have a master's degree. Uh, I had my own business for 40 years, consultant business. Uh, Brother Fred has won all kinds of awards, uh, was department head for 10 years. A distinguished professor, we counted all dung. We counted as nothing just to know the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you hear the Spirit uh, whisper in your ear, you proclaim it from the housetop. You, you may need to speak it over and over and over mm -hmm. again. But you know that verse about uh, Sherry, uh, well, not dying, but living. She, she uh, quoted that hundreds of times. She yeah. quoted it to lots of people. And, and so that's a yeah. proclamation. That's a, and so what I'm talking about today is not just about a confession, because a confession, you're saying something that Jesus has said or that God has said. You're, you're repeating that. You're saying the same thing. But now a proclamation is moving it up to a higher level, and, and it's proclaiming by the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and it has power behind it, enough power in the Word of God to bring it uh, to pass. So now you are agreeing with uh, the Word of God, and it's saying the same thing that God is saying. Uh, but it has behind it the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So confession is a good thing, and you can confess, and uh, you can uh, read the Bible, and you can memorize the Bible, and you can speak uh, the scriptures, and that's very positive, and I encourage you to do it, but it moves into a higher level, level. Higher when, level. When you hear the Spirit of God, and the, and the scripture becomes alive to you, and you begin to speak it, out and it's alive to you and that is a proclamation Amen. and you use proclamations to do spiritual warfare uh, it may be over 
your family or over a city. Mm -hmm. You need to hear what the Spirit of God says. You need to pull down some spiritual strongholds over your community or in your family. Pull them down. You do it with proclamation. The, this is the most effective way to release the power of God into your situation is by making a proclamation, yeah. not just a confession. A confession is good, but I'm talking about a higher level where you have heard what God has said. It has come through the Holy Spirit, whispered in inside of you, and now you're going to release the power that is within you through a proclamation. Now, so we've made many, many different proclamations, and there are many things that God has spoken to us over over time. And for uh, for example, I'll just give you a few. Um, five, uh, First Thessalonians 5, 23 says, and the very God of peace, peace uh, shall uh, sanctify you wholly and uh, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and whole and complete and blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Spirit of God spoke that to me on July the 4th, 1997. And I've begun to, <laughs> to uh, proclaim that verse over and over again. First yes! Thessalonians 5, 23, because it came alive to me that day when the Spirit of God spoke to me and, and said, my whole spirit and soul and body, body. shall present be preserved sound and whole and complete and blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I've studied that scripture and I've spoken it out over and over again, hundreds of times uh, since July the 4th, 1997. Now, if you have a, a problem in, in your finances, for example, let's think about 2 uh, uh, Corinthians 9, 8. Now, this is a verse that has uh, become alive to me, and God is able yes. to make all grace, grace abound toward you, you, that you having all, all sufficiency in all things, things may abound to every, every good work. work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> finances. If you want, if you need finances in your mm -hmm. uh, situation, then look, Seek the Lord and, and let the Spirit of God bring alive scriptures to you like that. You begin to uh, proclaim them and proclaim them, not just confess them out of your intellect, but out of the Spirit of God. Because you've heard the Spirit of God speak to you, you begin to speak that out, okay? Mm -hmm. Or if it's uh, uh, over... If you have sickness in your body, do what I said with 1 Thessalonians 5.23. That became alive to me that day on July the 4th. Also, the scripture, uh, 2 Peter 2.24, or 1 Peter 2.24, is that by his stripes we, we are healed. We were healed. See, in Isaiah, it says by his stripes we are healed. But and in 1 Peter 2.24, it says by his stripes we were healed. Were healed. You know, there's no future tense in that in that concept that was seven isaiah wrote it down 700 years before jesus came on the earth and he said by his stripes we are healed it had nothing to do with oh in the future in the sweet by and by we'll be healed no it says by his stripes we are healed in first peter 5 24 when they cause now jesus has gone to the cross and mm -hmm. the, by the stripes on his back it says by his stripes we were healed so there's nothing about future tense in those, in those verses. Nothing about the future tense where we've got to put it off into the sweet by and by. No, it's it. we were healed Hallelujah. by his stripes. And so you've got to let the Holy Spirit speak to I you. Have one. I have one. All right, Sherry has one. Yes, just a couple of months ago, uh, as uh, a friend of mine, uh, we were studying in the book of Galatians, and and I've, I probably have said this to you before, but I proclaim it. I proclaim it every single day, and that's Galatians 1-4, because it came alive to me. It was burned into my heart uh, that day, and it's Galatians 1-4 that says that God has delivered me from this present evil world. He has delivered me. He has delivered me from COVID. He has delivered me from cancer. He has delivered me from any type of disease, any type of uh, mental disorder. He has delivered me from depression. He has delivered me from anxiety. He has delivered me from any evil 
that the enemy has uh, put on the earth to bring heartache and hurt and, and failure uh, to God's people. He has delivered me from this present evil world. Hallelujah. And continuing on with the vines, and I'm about to bring my part to close, but continuing on with the vines expository dictionary, uh, there was this a phrase that I saw in there that said, when you take the elements of the communion that started with the Lord's the Last Supper, then that is a proclamation. Oh, listen to mm, me. Mm, Taking those mm. elements, communion is a proclamation. Oh, wow. This is from the Vines Expository Dictionary. And so when by, by eating his bread and by uh, drinking the cup, uh, eating that bread and drinking that cup, then we are proclaiming uh, his death. That, that's proclaim. It's not confessing. It, it goes to a higher level. It's a proclamation. Mm, so I, I encourage you to take good. communion regularly. Take communion because it's a proclamation uh, of the death of Christ. And, and we want to partake. See, Jesus said, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and then you will abide in me. And, and that's what we do in communion. We're eating his flesh and drinking his blood and we're abiding in him you need to realize that he his presence is within you and, and when you do a proclamation it there are things that are going to be fully accomplished because the power of the word of god is has enough power within it to bring itself about when there is a proclamation made. So mm. the Father speaks it through the Spirit. You hear it inside of you. You release the power. And so the here is a, a way to, to summarize this message tonight that a bold proclamation will attract a bold response from, from heaven. heaven. That's what we want. We want a bold response from heaven. Mm -hmm. See, that night uh, that I began teaching uh, that class, uh, I proclaimed that my wife would stand and declare that she was free from cancer within a six weeks period. And she did do that in a week. But that very night, there was so much yeah, power, power that came upon her. First, she felt the hot oil. oil. All the way over, over and my then body. her body was lifted up. Uh, it wasn't like she jumped up or anything like that. Her body was lifted up. That's how much power was released through the proclamations that she had been making, I had been making. We were making proclamations, and things will be fully accomplished. If you need changes in your life, yes, in your you. situation, yeah. you need healing, if you need finances, prosperity, if you need a sound mind. You begin to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you and proclaim it. Proclaim it and release power. There is no more effective way to release the power of God into a situation mm -hmm. than to make proclamations. And you may have to make them over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. What you want to do is release the power into your life. Now, it's not just all about you and your needs, but also... You can make proclamations over your family and yes. over your community and yes. over this nation. There needs to be somebody in this nation making proclamations, proclamations over this nation Amen. that the, things, the way things are now is not the way they're going to be, but there are going to be changes because our God says there are going to be changes and that he raises up rulers uh, to suit him and he brings down rulers. Uh, to suit him. This is, we are in the government of God and we are residents of another realm, the realm of heaven. Yeah. And, and this is not our home. We are pilgrims passing through, but we have been sent here uh, to proclaim God's oh, no, will no, no, no. on the earth. Hallelujah. Right, Hallelujah. And the Lord would say this night, I say unto you, my children, rise up, rise up and take your place next to me. 
I say unto you, begin to proclaim, begin to say what I say, and you will see heaven and earth uh, uh, move away. You will see uh, the earth split in two. You will see uh, changes uh, that no other a way can they come about except by my power, saith the Lord, for I am he, I am the creator, I am the all in all, I am the one that shed my blood for you, I am the one uh, that increases uh, your power, saith the Lord, receive the Holy Spirit, receive more and more of my power, saith the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the name of the 